Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God fill you with peace and joy. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent, creating us new and contrite hearts so that when we turn to you and confess our sins, we may receive your full and perfect forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, every year we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration. In order that our Lent may be a time of renewal and growth, we begin this season by remembering our need for repentance, for the forgiveness of God proclaimed by Jesus Christ. I invite you therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and giving to those in need, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Let us, in a moment of silence, call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out all my offences. Wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Through the cross of Christ, God, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead in water as a reminder of your baptism and also as a sign of your penitence and mortality. It is only by the cross that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Remember, you are but dust, and to dust you will return. Will you turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ? I will. We rise again ashes from the good we failed to do. We rise again from ashes, redeemed, O Lord, by you. Our penance, Lord, our sorrow, our grieving hearts renew. Offering of ashes. 
ashes and offering to you we offer you our failures we offer you attempts the gifts not fully given the dreams not fully dreamt our stumblings give direction our visions wider view and offering of ashes and offering to you then raise us up from ashes your healing ease our pain though spring has turned to winter and sunshine turned to rain your rain will nurture growing and create the world anew and offering of ashes and offering to you give thanks to god the father who gave us life and breath give thanks to christ our savior who saved us by his death who with the holy spirit creates the world anew from an offering of ashes an offering to you hear the gospel of our lord jesus christ according to matthew glory to you o lord and whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I worked in London, we used to go to the 8 o'clock Ash Wednesday service at Westminster Abbey, which was just down the road from our offices. After the service, I was in the lift going up to our floor in the Ministry of Justice. And a chap said to me, sorry for saying this, but you've got a black mark on your forehead. He was being kind and thought I had bumped into something and I needed to wash my face. This in spite of the fact that I had my clerical shirt on. Ash Wednesday was totally off his radar. He may have been aware of pancakes the day before, but the idea of Shrove Tuesday as Shriven Tuesday, a day to make confession, receive forgiveness, and to have a celebration, a feast, before a fast, isn't something that crosses most people's minds as they tuck into their pancakes. I was always very moved 
when we had the ecumenical Ash Wednesday service in the prison. A lot of the lads would come and receive the ashes in a cross on their forehead and not wipe them off when they went back to the wings. To wear the cross very publicly in this way takes courage because it is saying, I am trying to follow Jesus, to be more like him. That is never easy. People can always accuse us of being hypocrites, of falling short. We aren't perfect. We do get things wrong. But by God's grace, we try. And that does make a difference. This year, Ash Wednesday is very different in the benefice. We are not able to be together and we made the sign of the cross in water on our own foreheads. It may not be so obvious to other people as being marked in ash, with a visible cross on our heads, but nevertheless it is obvious to us. By making the sign of the cross on our foreheads in water, we are reminding ourselves of our baptism when the priest will have made the sign of the cross after pouring water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The cross is a sign of us belonging to Christ, a sort of Christian birthmark that marks us as people who seek to live Jesus-shaped lives. Lent, which starts today and marks the beginning of our journey to Easter, used to be the time of preparation for people who will be baptised on Easter Day. And we still have echoes of this. Archbishop Sentamu used to have an open-air baptism service in York on Easter Day. And we here often renew our baptismal vows on Easter Day, committing ourselves afresh to turn to Christ, to repent of our sins and to renounce evil. Lent prepares us to do this wholeheartedly on Easter Day. Lent actually comes from the old English word Lenten, which means spring. I met a friend walking up Worsendale Road on a photographic expedition to take pictures of signs of new life. Snowdrops, bulbs coming up, buds on the trees. Perhaps our Lenten fast this year is to fast from negativity and to become observers of signs of hope and be agents of hope sharing such thoughts with others. In so many ways, it has been a grim year, and this third lockdown has felt for many especially tough and feels unending. It is as if, as individuals and as a society, we have been plunged into the wilderness against our will. But as Christians, we know that whilst the wilderness can be a place of testing and struggle, it is also a place where new possibilities come to birth. After his time in the wilderness, Jesus had clarified his public ministry, his priorities, and emerged after 40 days to begin preaching, teaching and healing. And if you are in the wilderness, in Israel or Palestine, as the spring rains come, you quickly see the seeds that have lain dormant spring up as signs of new life. So this Lent, be spotters of hope and new life. Maybe for a few moments each day, pause to think about what has given you hope. It may be a seemingly small thing, like hearing a story, a positive story on the television, or getting a phone call from a friend, or being in touch with someone. 
but these small things build together so that we begin to look forward and not dwell on the negatives. Maybe you could keep a Lenten journal and each day write down signs of hope. It may be that some of those things repeat themselves day after day, but that is okay. And maybe you can even share these signs of hope with friends and family, as well as giving thanks to God for them. I'd like to end by reading a poem also about water as we have thought about the waters of new life in our signing of the cross and remembering our baptism today. It is called A Pebble by James Foley and I would encourage you to make ripples of hope this Lent as you discover more and more of the eternal hope that we have in Jesus. Drop a pebble in the water, just a splash and it is gone, but there's half a hundred ripples circling on and on and on, spreading, spreading from the centre, flowing on out to the sea, and there is no way of telling where the end is going to be. Drop a pebble in the water, in a minute you forget, but there's little waves are flowing and there's ripples circling yet. And those little waves are flowing to a great big wave have grown. You've disturbed a mighty river just by dropping in a stone. Drop an unwind, unkind word or careless, in a minute it is gone but there's half a hundred ripples circling on and on and on. They keep spreading, spreading, spreading from the centre as they go, and there is no way to stop them once you've started them to flow. Drop an unkind word or careless, in a minute you forget, but there's little waves are flowing and there's ripples circling yet. And perhaps in some sad heart, a mighty wave of tears you've stirred and disturbed a life was happy ere you dropped that unkind word. Drop a word of cheer and kindness, just a flash and it is gone, but there's half a hundred ripples circling on and on and on, bearing hope and joy and comfort on each splashing, dashing wave till you wouldn't believe the volume of the one kind word you gave. Drop a word of cheer and kindness, in a minute you forget, but there's gladness still a-swelling, and there's joy circling yet. And you've rolled a wave of comfort, whose sweet music can be heard over miles and miles of water, just by dropping one kind word. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, take our small offerings of self-denial this Lent as a sign of our great longing for you. We hunger for your presence in our lives and we thirst for your love. We hunger for justice, for those who are wronged or oppressed and we thirst for your peace. We hunger for a glimpse of your glory, and we thirst for your stillness in our hearts. God of giving, God of longing, God of peace, we hunger for you. May the Lord, in these days of mercy, make you quiet and prayerful. May the Lord, in these days of challenge, make you stronger in faith. May the Lord, in these days of waiting, open your hearts to the mystery of the cross and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy, Holy Spirit be with you this Lenten time and forevermore. Amen.
fut 